Hi everyone, welcome to my video on influenza, a super contagious virus that you've definitely heard of but you might not know the details. In this video, I am covering the different types of influenza, some pathophysiology, signs and symptoms, how to prevent spread, its treatment, and possible complications. Influenza is a virus, that means antibiotics don't work against them. Like I said earlier, influenza is very contagious. It spreads through airborne droplets where an infected person coughs or sneezes and those droplets float in the air and are breathed in by someone. Or through direct contact, say an infected person coughs into their hand and touches a public door or shakes someone's hand. Influenza has a very short incubation period of just 18 to 72 hours and then you get those symptoms. Symptoms. Adults are contagious from 24 hours before the first symptoms to 5 days after, and immunosuppressed patients can be contagious for weeks. It is a respiratory infection. I'm sure you are all very familiar with it. The virus infects cells in your respiratory tract, so the nose or the trachea. It replicates in those cells and is released to infect more cells. And those cells die and are shed and fluid leaks through causing the rhinorrhea, which is runny nose, and coughing. Systemic symptoms like headache, malaise, which is weakness, fever, and chills are triggered by the body's immune system, which is activated in response to the virus's invasion. The fevers and weakness can last for a few days to weeks. The respiratory tract necrosis, or cell death, caused by influenza also puts you at risk for bacterial infection most commonly ear infections and sinus infections. And there are other complications that can happen which I'll talk about in a few slides. There are different strains of the influenza virus. Influenza A is responsible for the most serious outbreaks that have happened and it's found in birds, pigs, whales, and humans. It can mutate its surface antigens to evade old immune defenses. These surface antigens are used to identify specific strains. Influenza B is found in humans. It's less severe than influenza A, but it can cause small outbreaks. Influenza C is found in pigs, dogs, and humans, and they cause very mild infections that sometimes go unnoticed. Sometimes animal viruses can mutate and infect humans. They are highly infectious and become pandemic or spread globally, like the 1918 Spanish influenza that killed 100 million people and the 2009 swine flu that caused over 12,000 deaths, according to the CDC. There is another virus infecting millions of birds in Asia. It's now called the bird flu or the avian flu that has started to spread through humans and could cause a pandemic in the future. To prevent influenza outbreaks, vaccines are available for everyone. There are different strains of influenza that are most likely to attack every year. So each year the vaccine is modified to contain antigens for the leading strain of the year, which could be more than one. So it is possible to get the flu even though you got the flu shot because you might have been infected with a strain not covered by the vaccine. The vaccine has egg proteins in it, so do not take it if you have a severe egg allergy or if you've had an allergic reaction to the flu vaccine before. It is given in the fall before the winter outbreak. The CDC recommends that everyone gets the annual flu shot, but especially people at high risk of getting the flu. So high risk people are 65 years and older, nursing home residents, people with chronic illnesses like asthma, COPD, or diabetes, and then healthcare workers or families who are in close contact with high-risk patients also need to take the flu shot too so that they don't spread it to the people they are taking care of. Lots of people refuse to get the vaccine. They say things like, it gave me the flu last time, or I hate needles. One lady told me that her grandmother died from the flu shot. Please share your reasons for getting or not getting the flu shot in the comments below. I'd love to know. Now, a very small percentage of people do feel sick after getting the vaccine, but serious reactions to the flu vaccine are very, very, very rare. And being sick for just a day after getting the flu shot is much better than being hospitalized 
hospitalized with influenza, contributing to an epidemic, or dying because of it. For those that have influenza, please educate them to wash their hands frequently and especially after coughing, sneezing, blowing their nose, or touching their face. Make sure they stay at home. Keep students home from school and avoid large gatherings. Cough or sneeze into tissues and throw them away. Don't reuse the same tissues. If you don't have a tissue, cough or sneeze into your upper sleeve to prevent air droplets from flying everywhere or getting on your hands, which can contaminate anything you touch. Treatment. There are some antivirals available, but strains are becoming more and more resistant. Relenza and Tamiflu are two drugs that prevent newly replicated influenza A and B virus from being released from infected cells. Relenza is inhaled and Tamiflu is an oral pill. Patients must finish the whole course usually five days or longer for severe illnesses or if they are in a nursing home. For the symptoms, there are many over-the-counter drugs. Patients can take acetaminophen for fevers, NSAIDs for body weakness and aches, decongestants and antihistamines for congestion, and cough medicine. Sometimes an upper respiratory infection by influenza can be followed by a bacterial infection, and this is the only case where you would take antibiotics as well. You want to focus on supportive therapy to ease their symptoms. Advise people to stay at home, rest, take fluids, and take the symptom relief drugs. If they are hospitalized, it is usually because they have another illness like asthma or COPD, or they are elderly and dehydrated. These patients will be placed on droplet precautions. This means a private room if possible, or sharing with another patient with the flu. Everyone going in the room must wear a mask, and the patient must wear a mask if leaving the the room. Now the avian or bird flu can quickly lead to shortness of breath and pneumonia and even diarrhea. Antibiotics can be given for the pneumonia and fluids for diarrhea. If necessary, patients will be put on oxygen or intubated and mechanical ventilation started until they can breathe on their own again. Patients with the bird flu need to be put in negative pressure rooms with airborne precautions. These rooms have a ventilation system that pushes air outside or through a filtration system so that when the door to the room is open, the air with virus floating around in it from the room doesn't go into the hallway. Anyone going into the room needs to wear an N95 mask that when fitted properly can filter 95% of tiny particles. These masks won't work for children and people with facial hair. Anyone in close contact with patients with the bird flu will need to take Tamiflu or Relenza. Here are some possible complications of influenza. Some are more likely to occur than others. Pneumonia is more likely to develop in younger children with influenza because they have narrower airways and immature alveoli. And older adults as well because they have weaker coughs and hold more air in their lungs. Influenza pneumonia can be deadly because it progresses fast. The rapid fluid buildup from the inflammation in your lungs causes hypoxemia, which is not enough oxygen in the blood. Influenza can also exacerbate asthma, COPD, and chronic bronchitis. Most of these patients are admitted and some will require mechanical ventilation. Race syndrome is a very rare condition that causes swelling of the liver and the brain, and it mostly affects children two to three weeks after influenza onset who have taken aspirin. Watch for repeated vomiting, changes in level of consciousness, personality changes, and seizures. Without aggressive supportive care, it is also a deadly condition. Guillain-Barre is is another very rare condition where the immune system attacks the nerve cells of the peripheral nervous system. Usually it begins as tingling and weakness in the legs and feet and it moves up the body. In severe cases it leads to paralysis even of the lungs. People do recover from this condition but some might be left with weaknesses. There are also a very small percent of people who get Guillain-Barre after receiving certain batches of the influenza vaccine. People who've gotten Guillain-Barre from the influenza vaccine can never get it again. And that's all I have on influenza. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more nursing exemplars in 10 minutes. I post new videos every Tuesday.